Hello, I'm Pastor Dave, and this is our pre-recorded sermon for Sunday, June, or August 1st. This sermon is based off 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 1, and verses 17 through 27. This is the passing of Saul and David's lament for Saul and Jonathan. I would encourage you to read those passages before moving on with the sermon, but you can also continue on. Let us begin. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be worthy in your sight. Amen. How do you deal with difficult and tragic events? This is something that can be interesting to ask ourselves, because inevitably we will encounter difficult times. I mean, we will lose friends and loved ones to death. We will experience job losses and accidents. There will be opportunities that we think we have that we will lose out on. We will have issues of health and declines in health that will take away opportunities for the future. Basically, we all know that life is not perfect. And we will have difficulties from time to time. And it's inter interesting to ask how we will deal with those. In 2 Samuel, that first chapter, we see how David deals with a difficult time because he hears that King Saul and David's good friend and Saul's son, Jonathan, were killed. And how David reacts is interesting because it is very unexpected. As much as David and Jonathan were close, very close, David and Saul had a falling out as the years went on as Saul's heart turned away from God and became more jealous of David. At one point, it, the relationship was so strained that the messenger who brought this news to David thought David would rejoice in this news. But that's not how David reacted. Instead, we get this long lament for Saul and Jonathan, a lament that David called on all the people of Israel to share to repeat. And it starts to show us the importance of how we deal with these difficult times in our lives, especially mourning. To start, as everyone is made in the image of God, we should mourn those who pass. It's not always the easiest thing to do, and there are some extreme cases where it would be hard to mourn, even knowing and remembering that they are a child of God and made in the image of God. But really, it is important to mourn and mark the passings, even if they're ones we want to celebrate. We do need to mark their death and passing. Because really, it needs to be done. If they're a loved one, it's easy. If you didn't get along with them, it's a little harder. But David shows that it needs to be done. David loved Jonathan. They were close. They were essentially brothers. David was saddened by his loss. But then there's Saul. Some would think David should celebrate his demise. David was definitely safer with Saul out of the picture, but yet David remembered Saul as the king. Saul as, really, his father-in-law. David didn't hold on to the grudge of the past and marked the passing. And we need to remember that we should be able to do that, even if it's not the easiest thing to do. And that really shows us why it needs to be this way. Because if David could mourn Saul, who tried to kill him, we can mourn others. We can mourn anybody. And really, even beyond people, we can mourn the loss of anything. And in many ways, we should do so. More or less for, even if we didn't really like them, but for our own good. I mean, it's never good to hold on to hatred and the vitriol that we could have towards others. That's why forgiveness is more for the person forgiving than the one who was forgiven. It's the same with mourning. It's more for the one who mourns than the one who is being mourned. And it's the same in difficult situations, the loss of opportunities, the loss of jobs, decline of health. Many of those things we can't do anything about. And in many ways, mourning the loss of them or 
finding some other way to mark them enables us to let go of what we hold on to so we can move forward. And this isn't always easy, and I know that, especially for some of us, and especially for men. Things like mourning and dealing with these situations and these losses is not an easy thing to do because we're kind of taught and told to be more stoic about them. But in reality, as we see very much in what David wrote and what David did, going through the full actions of formal mourning, it is acceptable to emote our losses. It is something that needs to be done. I'm not saying everyone has to cry hysterically like the paid mourners of the ancient times. But really, we do need to emotionally respond. However, it is appropriate for us. I mean, some may cry. Fine. Some may just be more introspective about it. Some might have that physical result of going old school and like tearing clothes. Others write poetry. Others find ways of marking it appropriately to help them move forward. And it's also a reminder for everyone that we need the space to do so. It is a common thing, and you can look it up and see yourself, that really in many places, it's not universal, but it seems to be the general rule that you get three days to you get three days off work for the death of someone in your family. And if it's extended family, you get a day to go to the funeral. Now, for some, that might be more than enough. But to think of some of the losses and you get three days. Some companies might be more responsive to it and give more time. But to take, to say you have three days, that's hard to do. It's hard to get through the very beginning stages of recognizing the loss and moving through the grieving process in a short amount of time. But really, that's why we have the rituals that go with losses and difficult situations, whether it's a funeral ritual when dealing with an actual loss, or you can look at the Old Testament to other rituals like coming back from battle. There was a full ritual for the army of Israel to do before they returned home, about five days. We need to find, have the space to work through everything we've been through so we can come through it and start moving forward again. That's really, that's what mourning does, whether it's a person or another entity. Mourning allows us to let go of the pain we experience so we're not weighed down by it. I mean, think of the five stages of grief that are commonly used. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. The goal was to get to that last one, acceptance, but you have to deal with everything else first, like trying to move past denying that it happened, to not being angry that it turned out that way, to trying to cut the deals, often a prayer to get out of it or make it not be so, to take their place, to just being sad and depressed about the situation. It does take time to do that, but you need to go through the process. You need to actually mourn, emote it, to move through. So otherwise, you stay stuck. And this is something David did well. That lament helped David and those around him, as well as the other parts of the mourning process, to go from Saul and Jonathan killed in battle to David being the king, where Saul and Jonathan are history. They're still part of David's past. They're still remembered, but... The people were able to move forward. David was able to move forward. And that really is the ultimate goal. And the whole purpose of mourning and doing these things. Because when we need to acknowledge our losses to be able to move on in our lives. It kind of almost seems harsh to say that. But that is really the point. That's what David did. You mourn. You emote. You get through it. You move on with life. Could you imagine a sad, depressed King David for years and years because Jonathan was dead? David does move on. I'm sure he never forgot Jonathan. He never forgot Saul. Others around him didn't either. But they moved beyond that. And it is the same for us. When we can actually mourn the losses work through the situations suddenly we're not dwelling upon those who aren't here anymore we're not dwelling on the lost opportunities 
We're focused more on the present. We're focused on the future. We're looking forward. That's really what David was doing in this lament. And really, it's something we need. It's something that we are reminded of when we do communion liturgy, where we do the confession and pardon of sins. It's the same concept of confession helps one process what they did and to let go of the baggage of the sin so they can move toward Christ. Christ who paid for the sins on the cross so we're not burdened by them. It's something we do every time we celebrate communion. And being a communion Sunday, we're going to hear the words again to remember that we are not bound by what happened before, that we can let go of it. God gives us the means and the examples to let go of the pain and suffering from the past, whether we experienced it or we created it, to move forward. In lamenting and mourning, it's to move into the present day and move forward in life. With sin, it's to leave sin in the past and to move closer to God in this ultimate goal of salvation. We never forget, but we move forward in life, move forward to something greater with Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, in many ways, we forget how often you give us the tools for the difficult parts of our life and for the sins that weigh us down. Help us to remember to use the tools you gave us, to honor our, the past, to remember it, but also the tools able to overcome, to remove the baggage and the weight that we can move forward to be closer to you with our eyes set on Christ and what our faith is. So be with us and help us to mourn our losses while we also celebrate what is to come. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This is our pre-recorded sermon. The full service is available on Facebook at the East Salem UMC Facebook page where we live stream the service at 845 and it remains there for a while afterwards. So if you want the full service, that is there for you. But until next time, I'm Pastor Dave and may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.